Hey, 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 what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Slightly Warp Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. What's good, man? What is going on, my friend? Uh, nothing new in my world. My squad's $44 million uh, in less debt right now, but still got problems. We'll get to that later on in the show. Um, I'm not ready for fall, but I guess I got no choice. I went to run yesterday yes. and that crisp air hit me. And today is not going to be any different. After the show, I plan on getting a couple more miles in. We'll see how yeah, that goes. It's been, it's been awfully cold in the morning. It's been in the 40s. So, yeah. Uh, it was actually 39 this morning. There's only 41 here. So, uh, it was a little warmer. Well, we've got a uh, frost advisory for tonight slash tomorrow yeah. morning so this should be fun. yeah it's gonna be in the 30s in the morning i'm debating Ooh. if i'm gonna wait till the sun comes out or not uh well you got it like that i gotta be at work at early in the morning so i gotta get mine in in the evenings for now and while we're on the subject of fitness today being the 15th uh anybody who's uh followed our episodes they know that uh, we had a contest in the Change Fitness Group, uh, the October, not October, the Fall Challenge. Today's the last day for the challenge. And um, I believe next week, I'm going to have Big Show draw names to see who's number one and who's number two. Now, if you have been following, and you know that the last time I mentioned the contest, it would be one, two, and three. Unfortunately, there was not a third person that met the complete requirements for the challenge. I'm kind of disappointed by that show because there's over 300 people in the change group. And yeah, and but we only really see about four or five people out of that 300 that actually post. True. Very true. So... Um, yeah, it, it, it does kind of suck, but it is what it is. Um, I, I, I really, I'm motivated by helping people, enlightening people, but you can only say so much and, you know, either people are going to do it or they're not, it's in their hands. Yes. And you can't, uh, you know, people will do that when they're ready. They can't be forced to, to change. They got to be willing to make the change. That being speaking said, from ex speaking from experience, I know once we get towards the end of the year slash January, we're going to see a rise in people that are starting. Um, so what I'm going to do then is try to find ways to keep them motivated because I don't want to see as big a drop off as we do every year. Yeah, people will start on January 1st and by January 6th, they've stopped. If they make it those six days. Right. <clears throat> if so, people would only if people would only really realize that if they did something consistently for seven days in a row, it will generate habits. It's all it yeah, takes. Um, Consistent action for seven days. I decided to run a minimum of two miles. You can do more, but you can't do less than two every day in the month of October. Period. A, to build a better base for my cardio, and B, to make sure that consistency is there. I don't want to yes. go into the winter time saying, oh, I'll wait till whatever day when it's warmer or something like that. I'm just going to get used to the changing temperatures. I'm going to change with them, you know, uh, man up, layer up, whatever it takes. Yep. Yeah. And now, That's in my where mind, I'm at as well. In my mind, that, that's easy, though, because I think it was 2012 when I started running again. And it was a New Year's resolution, by the way. And on January the 4th, I believe it was, I went out. I ran and there was snow on the ground and it was like single digit temperatures. I didn't run far. I didn't run hard. But at least I said to myself, if I can do it here. There, there's no other situation where I should, you know, ever, ever say that I can't. I agree. 
All right. What you and guys have been? What's that? What's that saying that you always see? Uh, you know, a year from now, you'll be thankful that you started, mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, versus a wishing that you should start. True. And my motto that I always, you know, try to tell people: you don't want to wake up one, three, five years from now and say, what if, what if I had done this? What if I did do that? I'd rather wake up and reflect on things that didn't go right, but at least knowing I tried than to ever say, I wish I did, or I should have. And people should get, and people who are deciding to get healthier need to also give themselves grace. Um, you know, because, you know, and I'm speaking for myself, you know, I didn't get 400 pounds overnight. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It was, it was a layering of Oreos and Twinkies and soda pop and all that other bullshit. So I realized that it's not going to be overnight that all my weight is gone. However, once it starts going, you know, and you'll be the last one to notice it. Mm-hmm. Because people tell me all the time that they can see it. And I'm like, I can't, you know, I still can't. But, uh, you know, it's definitely give yourself grace because in the long run, you keep the work up. You you will. Results will come for sure. Yeah. um, You got to go slow because I've seen people that try to go all out, whatever workout it is, whether it's running, lifting, walking. They try to do it all. And we'll just use weightlifting, for example. Um, Work out for five minutes. Don't try to work out for two hours. You'll kill yourself. Five minutes. See, I'll I'll disagree with that. I disagree with that. You need to, you need to at least no less than 30 minutes, whatever it is. Even if you are 600 pounds. Even if you're 600 pounds, there are chair exercises that you can sit and do for 30 minutes. I would agree with you if if that person's able to do that. At the very least, though, I would say the reason why I say five minutes, nine times out of 10, if you commit to five minutes, you're going to go longer than that. Right. With goal setting, you don't want to make it too easy. That is also true. I mean, if you haven't built up a sweat, if you haven't worked up a sweat, you ain't done nothing. So keep going by all means. I mean, the big, right. The bigger you are, the harder it is going to be. But, um, yeah, I, I strong, I mean, I started, that's what all the apps in the health people said, you know, dedicate 30 minutes a day, you know, 30 turned into 45, 45 turned into 60. I, I only started lifting weights. That's all I did for the first few months. And then I was like, I got to get some cardio in. And then, you know, I said, I'm going to walk a couple miles a day. That two turned into three, three turned into four, four turned into five. You know, now I'm steadily, you know, five, four to six miles a day, depending on, you know, how I feel. Um, you know, sometimes I can go more. I just don't, you know. Yeah. See, now I'm the flip side of you. I've got to start lifting more because it ain't nothing for me to go out there and run a couple miles. Right. Um, nothing at all, you know. That's not a problem. I've got to like, you know, get back under the bench, squat, you know, the basics, because, you know, one thing alone is not good for your joints. You you really should do multiple things. And oh, yeah. Most deaf. I want to read this to you because I saw this a long time ago. I posted it before on the change forum, too, because you mentioned you're the last person to see those results. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's very true. This thing says it's got three different numbers. on. It takes four weeks for you to see your body changing. It takes eight weeks for friends and family. It takes 12 weeks for the rest of the world. Keep going. Um, and, it, and it takes 275 years for you to see it in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Speaking and I of- just but before we move on and I mm-hmm. want to go back to that 30 minute versus 5 minute thing. Yeah. Okay. Um 
the reason why it's it, it in my opinion um for whatever it's worth it would be no different than if i said hey rick you mm -hmm. need to start doing some sort of martial art training uh because in you know in a year and a half i know for a fact somebody's going to kick in your front door and you need you're going to need to physically defend yourself or your family okay mm -hmm. i tell you that's going to happen I guarantee you, if you only do five minutes worth of class a day, you will not be ready. Oh, I agree. Now, the five so minute minimum, rule, the five minimum minute rule class should just be 30. to build a habit. You should not stay there. No, no, I, I agree. But a lot of people, uh, that's why I think the 30 minutes is the habit for me. Yeah. Because once you get into it, you kind it kind of kind of draws you in like a magnet. You can't get away from it. Yeah. And when you don't do it, you feel that you don't do it. It's kind of like Sunday, five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going, well, shit, I'm getting off my ass and going to walk. You know, I've been sitting around all day. I, I needed to move. And so, yeah, that's yeah, that, just that's, my humble opinion. That's why on the weekends I get it done early. First thing, first thing. And I have to, because usually Sunday is my long run day. Now, granted, I only ran seven miles on Sunday, but. If I had waited, I wouldn't have did it because you know I'm going to be watching football. So yeah. I might as well get it done early. I, I was mad because I missed the first few minutes of the London game. <laughs> but, I, you know, I got it in. So it's all good. And and apparently I didn't miss much. All right, we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, uh, I want to I wanna talk about uh, season seven of uh, this Game of Thrones TV show that we've been okay. promising people for two weeks. Uh, and I got some questions for you. Just to recap, a couple big things for me in this show. Um, this was the season where the Hound found out that his brother, i.e. the Mountain, was still alive. Uh, he, he was a reanimated corpse that served uh, Cersei. And I believe, yeah, the Night King, he did destroy the barrier and uh, the dead entered Westeros. Uh, I remember yes. that. And and we talked about it a couple weeks ago. We were right. This was the one where Littlefinger, uh, at the end of the season, was executed by uh, Sansa and Arya. And yes. I did not realize until, you know, watching it all over again, the same blade was used on him that was originally used in the first season on Bran. Yes, that that blade, and it's the one that he lied about, which initiated the entire War of the Five Kingdoms. Yes, um, that that whole that that blade actually, and I know you haven't watched it. That blade dates all the way back to the first episode of Dance with Dragons, the Dance of the Dragons that just came out, the new ep the new series. Mm, uh, okay, that that blade came all the way back to uh i think his name is viserys viserys tigarian he was the the tigarian king that that actually was in power for like 50 some odd years and the realm was in peace um he actually died because you know he, they sat on the throne uh the well they call it the iron throne and the the sword like nicked him and it became a bacterial infection that slowly over the years basically ate away his body. And that's how he died. And, and his whole, um, his whole, uh, uh, reason why he died and who he made his successor is what actually started the, uh, the fight for dance of the dragons. Mm, so it set things in motion, huh? Yes. But that blade goes all the way back to then. And that blade actually plays a prominent role in season eight as well. Okay. Now, what were your highlights from season seven? Um, I you know, I actually uh liked a lot about it. I mean, it you know you're setting it up for the big finale. We all knew at this time when we were watching uh season seven in real time we knew that season eight was going to be the last season so they had to button up all the all the storylines so you knew once uh you know the that the night king 
reanimated one of Daenerys' dragons, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, you know, they was going to be formidable. He was now more formidable than he was to begin with. When that ice wall came down, you know, you just knew, okay, you know, it's about, it's about to happen. Here we go. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, how they kind of closed up the books with, uh, you know, with Sansa and the, the North taking care of Peter Bellish and, all that good stuff. It it was uh now if I'm not mistaken as well, season seven is also the same season where Aya got uh retribution with the phrase, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, she was she did all that. She the North remembers, she kind of redeemed her family's uh untimely deaths, the people that were in charge of them that were still alive too take responsibility for it she was able to uh get him back and in a very cool way I, I i think yeah yeah um what didn't quite work for you during the seventh season um it's been a while since i since i looked at it i mean they're really they all you know from one season one to season seven the end of it they were all pretty good. Like I didn't really have any negatives about it, so to speak. Season eight, I just feel like they buttoned everything up too fast. Yeah, and we'll 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 start talking about season yeah, eight. Next we'll definitely week. talk about that. But that's um, see, I didn't really have any downfalls with season seven. One thing that the, the only downfall that I had wasn't really season seven's fault. It's also a part of season eight. You like you said, we knew eight was coming. The problem was the gap between season seven and season eight. That's a HBO thing right there. That's not really story related, but it, it kind of like, I don't want to say ticks you off, but it makes you lose a little bit because it's so long since you've seen these characters when they finally get around to, you know, bringing them back for the next season. And, and yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. And it's not the first show to do it. It's not the first time it's been done. Um, any of you big time producers out there, please keep that in mind. If you have four to six months between seasons and you get to the final season, don't wait a year and a half. Don't wait two years. That that don't work. Well, it, it didn't work as a fan, but to give them their grace, okay, there were two episodes in that series in season eight that probably took a lot of time and money to film. So they needed true. all that extra time to do all of that. Very true. Now, if you look at season seven as a whole, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. would you say that it stacks up with the first six seasons? Is it on par? Is it slightly below par? Or do you think it's better? Um, I would say it's it's right in the same it's right in the same honey hole as the rest of them. I think it's it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I'm I'm going to say was it the fifth fifth season? I think was you know the best one to me. It might have been the six. No, it was the it was the fifth that I think was the best season. Um, the season that I disliked the most was when they did all of the when Daenerys was fighting all the golden harpies and Cersei and them were fighting the damn sept, that religious group, you know, that I just, that whole season just kind of whatever season that was. God, I forget. I think it was five or six, but I think that was six. I could be wrong. I, I remember that. Cause that whole six, sept, six, I, I'm cause... pretty sure it wasn't six because six was when, you know, you had the fight of the bastards and the end of okay. the Okay. Then then I've got it Bolton switched around. Line. Then it's the fifth season and it's the sixth season that I, I, I prefer because the fight yeah, of the bastards was, was in the season that, that I liked. Yeah. The Battle of the Bastards was the one of my favorite episodes of the whole entire series. Yeah. It was um, put together very well. So I would say it's on par as well. Um, and you're right. Up to that point, there was no drop off. I don't want to say anything else because we are going to start off next week with season eight, episode one. I don't remember if yes. it was uh, 
I don't remember. If it I think was there's seven a total or of eight. eight. Yeah, I think there's a total of eight episodes. I okay. think okay. there was only seven episodes in season seven, but um, I, I didn't. I wanted to be sure before I spoke up about eight. So when you guys listen to us talk about it uh, next week, you're gonna be like, they didn't finish. We're purposely not going to finish. We're gonna break them down episode by episode. That way we can, you know, talk about it all. And I'm probably going to spend my Saturdays, you know, popping in an episode. That way I'm fresh and good to go when we record on Tuesday. I'm going to watch it a couple hours before our Tuesday podcast. Hey, there you go. Um, also, if you guys want to chime in, you're more than welcome to hit us up. The Slightly Warped Podcast at Yahoo.com or on your podcast feed of choice or on this YouTube channel. You can go into the comments as well. We don't care. I look at all of them, so I'm good with it. Also, let us know what you want to see in future episodes. I, I kind of like that, so I'm game. Show, I'm getting ready to talk to you about the National Football League, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It has nothing to do with Devontae. It has to do with our picks last week. Did you destroy me? No, 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 no. We both did good. Good. Deal. Um, there were. 14... I know I lost. I know I lost last last night's game. There were there were I'm... fourteen games this week. You went eleven and three. Ah oh, shit! I went twelve and two. So we were oh, right snap. there. We were and... finally a winning record since week one. How did? Me. How did how did we only separate by one game? Weren't we off on four of them? Yeah, but a couple you won, a couple I won. I'll go through them with you. That first Thursday night game, you went with the Seahawks. I mean, I went with the Seahawks. You went with the 49ers. 49ers won. Then you went with the Bears. I went with the Jaguars. Bears won. So you are already up two. Gotcha. We, we both had the Packers, Colts, Texans, Buccaneers, Eagles. Won those games. Then you went with the Commanders. I went with the Ravens. Ravens won. Then you went with the Broncos. I went with the Chargers. Chargers won. So we were neck and neck. We both there had Pittsburgh, Detroit, Falcons, Bengals. But you went with the Jets last night. I went with the Bills. So literally, take the Bills three points. Yeah, exactly. Three points separated us. Gotcha. A mere field goal. Yeah. Um, so we did very good. I will I will get to this week's picks in just a second. I'm gonna circle back to Devontae. Um really still a good wide receiver. I'm happy that he's happy. But as a fan, I only want someone to be on my squad if they want to be on my squad. And Bills fans know what I'm talking about when it comes to Stephon Diggs and stuff like that. I get that. Every team has that guy who's more about the dollar than, you know, building the foundation and winning. I'm not going to say every team because there is that one at one arrowhead drive that seems like everybody's, you know, clicking. Um, well, I mean, you could have, you could put Tyree Kill. He wanted out. That is true. And, and look where that got him. So now he wants back, right? Uh, obviously, Devontae feels like he won because he gets to play with his buddy Aaron. Okay, fine. And we feel like we won because that 44 million will be picked up by the Jets. Thank you, New York, because that's money we can put to free agents that are willing to come here. And we'll get that third round draft pick that we could use for something. Hope we don't blow it. It does become a second round draft pick if he meets certain, ex uh, for our English speaking audience, certain incentives. So there's that. We'll see how this turns up, you know, at the end of the so week. So they're paying the rest of his salary this year, right? Yes. Is that what you said? How does that, like, that doesn't automatically give you. Put you guys forty four under the 
you know. Well, that's how much he would be wanting next year. But that doesn't put you like that much under the cap. No, it's it doesn't have anything to do with cap space at all. Oh, no. Well, you said that you'd give you money to to sign free agents. That's cap space. I know. I was thinking hypothetically, not not necessarily with the cap. Because gotcha. Yeah. I was uh, just curious how that worked. Yeah, it's so like, it's like, hey, thanks, New York. You you take care of the bag. We'll, we're well, good. you know, the Raiders they have ninety nine problems, but seventeen ain't one of them no more. Nope. All right, let's go to week seven. Lucky number seven. Let's keep this thing rolling. Well, also before we move on, we also got us the the Bills traded for uh, Cooper today as well. Yeah, they got um, they got Cooper from the Browns. Amari Cooper is going to be serviceable. He's very serviceable. Um, the problem with Amari Cooper, Cleveland knows this, Dallas knows this, Vegas knows this. He will be on for a couple games, and then he'll disappear for a game. So Buffalo, be ready for that. All right. Uh, Thursday, the Broncos are at the Saints. I'm going to go with uh, the Broncos on this one. Man, they both suck. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go with Broncos. Definitely. Okay. Sunday... Another London game. Patriots at the uh, London Jaguars. I've learned my lesson. I'm going with the Patriots. Yeah, I think because Jacksonville actually stayed in London, so they don't have the travel. So they're completely acclimated, and they dropped last week. I think that mm. they're going to beat the they're going to beat the Patriots. Okay, you, you you've made me. Rethink that. I forgot about that. Although, although Drake May looked really good with New England the other day. Oh, let me just roll the dice. I'm going with the Jaguars. All right. Sunday at noon. Seahawks are at the Falcons. This looks like it could be a good game or it could be a stinker. You know my form. I'm going Atlanta. I'm going Atlanta too because when in doubt, go with the home team. Tennessee at Buffalo. I'm going with the Bills. Buffalo. Buffalo. So far, we are right down the line, then. Cleveland. I'm sorry. Cincinnati is at Cleveland. Cincinnati. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, yeah. Cleveland hasn't shown me anything. So I'm going to go with the Bengals as well. Houston Texans at the Packers. Now, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one right here. I think I'm going to go with Green Bay. Hmm. Looking at something real quick. Okay. If this game was in Houston, I would probably go with Houston. I'm going with Green Bay. Well, we got to disagree sometime, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to go Houston. Okay. Uh, Dolphins at the Colts. I'm going to go with the Colts. Oh! They suck. <laughs> right. But who sucks less? Mm, I don't know, man. Uh, what's their record? Two and three, three and three. Dolphins... Did they have a bye this past week? They did, didn't they? Yes, they did. Mm, I'm going to go Dolphins. Okay. That's our second different one. Now, this game right here coming up yeah. is going to be a doozy. Lions at the Vikings. Vikings about to get their first loss. I I'm can't going, believe I'm this is a noon game. I'm going with the Lions. I mean the Lions are good. Don't get me wrong, but this is a division to, a division game. And they know it's not like they don't know each other. True. And the Vikings are playing really, 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 really good. 
Mm. I know it's this is tough, but I, I, I'm going with my heart on this one. I'm going with the Lions. My heart says Lions. My logistical head says Vikings, and I'm I'm just going to go with the home team. Give them just a little bit more of an advantage. I think the Detroit Lions are are coming off a blast of the Cowboys that they had something to prove. I think it's going to be a slight letdown. I, th I think the Vikings will 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 win at home. Okay. Uh, Eagles at the Giants. Eagles. Oh, this is Saquon's revenge game. Ooh, I forgot about that too. Uh, Philly. All right. Um, it's three o'clock games. Raiders at the Rams. Talk about two teams that suck. Um, I'm going with the Rams. Hmm. I'm surprised you had to think about that. Well, I mean. Yeah. And, and, and go back to this. The Rams were off last week. So they've had two weeks to prepare. And yeah. 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 You talked me into it. Rams. Panthers at the Commanders. Once upon a time, this would have been a snooze fest. This is going to be the Commanders bouncing back in a big way. I don't know. The Panthers put up pretty good fights whenever they play. I'm not saying they're going to win, but <laughs> I don't. I don't think that Washington will like beat them like since like the Lions beat the Cowboys or anything. I could be wrong, uh, but I'm still going Commanders. Yeah, nobody thought that uh, forty something was going to get hung on Dallas, but hey, it happens. Um, Jets at the Steelers. Man, I'm going with Steelers. That defense is just cold. Sunday night. TJ Watt is going to be all up on Aaron Rodgers. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, Steelers. Um, Monday night, the Ravens are at the Buccaneers. Ravens. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Even though it's in Tampa. I just think that th that new two-headed monster of Lamar Jackson and um, Derrick Henry, they're going to show out. But it's not the only game on Monday night because we also get Chargers at the Cardinals. I'm going Cardinals. I'm going to go with Chargers. Um, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to change that. I'm going to go with the Cardinals as well because Denver played uh, Los Angeles real close. And Denver is not anywhere near as good as the Cardinals. All right. that That's our picks. That's our picks. No, it's not. We got one more game. Wait, what, 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 what game did I miss? The Chiefs and the Niners. Oh, subliminal miss. Yeah. I'm going with the Chiefs. I'm going with the Chiefs. Same. I mean, they can't stop them during the Super Bowl. What makes me think they're going to stop them during the regular season? All right. That's that. That's that's it. Take us out. Of I just want to make sure we had that in. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Th that's hey, a foregone thank all for watching. We'll uh, talk to you next week. Love you, loved ones. Tomorrow's now promise. Deuces. We will see y'all next week. Remember, Game of Thrones, season eight, episode one. Holla. Holla.